Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And this is another one of these projects from the past. And I basically promised this one, if there's enough interest, when I was uh, basically showing uh, the wood graining in the Model A hot rod video. And a fair number of people said yes, they would like to see me go over the uh, AMT Coke truck that I built a few years ago. So that's what we're going to be doing. But to really confuse you, uh, wait a minute. Why is this here? I have still been working on my corporate flyers project. Um, it is proceeding in fits and starts. As you can see, I have most of the decals on, at least in terms of the red striping. I still have to do the, the fuselage markings and stuff like that. However, one of the reasons I've just been basically slow walking this is the AMT decals, they, they've been fairly good. They, they're not breaking up or anything like that, and they're certainly coming off the backing easily. But I'm finding that my decal setting solution, which is usually fairly strong, um, doesn't seem to be affecting them. Normally you can put it on and it'll just literally melt the decals right on, which is what you want. Um, these AMT decals just seem to be uh, laughing at it. So I think I'm going to try a different brand of setting solution, or maybe I'll just use some vinegar on it. I don't know. Um, so this has been, I'll put one decal on and then I'll, I'll set it aside and do something else. So that's why this has been going on, taking so long. Um, hopefully after this video, the next video I get up will be corporate flyers completed, but this is why I don't like making promises as to what's coming up next or what I'm going to work on next. Cause oftentimes, and I'm, I'm sure if, if we're all honest with each other, there will be times where you'll work on a project and uh, you just, just kind of lose the enthusiasm for it. I do want to get this done, but with the uh, problems I've been having with the decals for the Vega, I've just been not quite so enthusiastic about it. Now, before we take an overview of the completed model, there are a couple things that had to be done. I need to re-glue the uh, marker light on the fender right there. And that's my biggest quibble with the kit is there's no hinges or anything like that. This just sits on the nose of the truck, which looks fine, but inevitably I pick the darn thing up forgetting that this is not attached and it falls on the floor and purse break off it. The other thing we need to do is fix these mirrors. I'm not quite sure why I put the mirrors together this way. Um, basically, the, the, the looped part here should be coming out at 90 degrees, not, or it should be coming straight out, and I glued it on at 90 degrees. I'm not real happy with these mirrors, so I'm basically going to bust them apart and put them back together again correctly. So I've got the truck laying on its side, and as you can see, the, the the hoop mirror support here that I did have sitting at that weird angle, and once again, this is one of these, I don't know why I did that, it has been moved so it's now pointed straight out, and I've done the same thing with the other one. The next thing we need to do is to put the angled bracket, which will go from the upper area down to the lower mirror support. That'll be the next thing I put in. I've also glued the front turn signal back on again. These were chrome parts, and I've basically tinted them with, uh, to me, a red and yellow. And they're really, really nice parts. I wish I had a little box of those. They really look nice. All right, so there's our mirrors straightened out and repaired. I've also fixed the turn signal there. As well, I decided to put a little bit of um, panel wash in and around the lug nuts on the wheels. Makes them a little bit more grimy. So, of course, the basic kit, of course, here is the 
Ford Louisville box van by AMT. And this portion of the kit, of course, is common to AMT's snowplow kit. It comes with a different frame and, of course, dual tandem axles as opposed to just a set of duals. But otherwise, this part of the kit is the same. The box van portion here is common to, it's just recently been released in the last year, the, uh, the AMT's Twinkies truck. The Hostess truck. And it has a C-Series cab on it. And I would imagine if you wanted to, the C-Series stake bed, truck bed, could be put on here as well. So, basically what uh, AMT did is they designed a range of bodies that could be put onto different, ver or different frames, much like real trucks are set up with. As well, another Louisville kit that AMT has brought out periodically is the uh, is the racing body that comes with a, a stock car or a drag racer. It's basically a wedge, and you put the car on there. All of these kits are basically start the same parts. Well, let's just move this forward here. You can see I've got the door partially open. Uh, they have you, um, basically if you want the door to work, I'm working from memory here, I think what you do is you slice the door into many pieces and then you put it on a piece of duct tape. So it does go up and down with a fair amount of effort, but it's one of these things where you're like, once you move it up and down once or twice, you're kind of like, ah, let's just leave it. So the door is i believe if we take a close look at it here is a todco door and i don't know if that company is still in business but it was once uh, one of the most popular uh, brands of roll-up doors and the door latch mechanism if anyone who's ever had a job unloading trucks or loading trucks or driving trucks you'll recognize it and it is really Really, really looks the part here. Let's get close in on it. Nothing like, nothing like having to knock the, the ice and salt and sleet and crap off of one of those things before opening the door. This model does come with the powered uh, lift gate, and if memory serves, mine is capable of doing all the gyrations and everything necessary to pose it. But you know how it is when you build it, and then a few years later all the parts have seized together? That's pretty much the case for here. Now one thing, and I don't know if anyone else has noticed this when building this kit, is when you build it all exactly as they say, you actually end up with a substantial gap between the cab and the box. I think it was almost a scale foot of difference. Now, I know there should be a little bit of a gap between them, but a scale foot was a little bit much. And I, I went looking through my computer because at one point I had taken a photo of it. But when I got to the point where I was going to be putting the box on the truck, I discovered the gap. So what I did is I actually shortened the frame and glued it back together again with some reinforcing in order to eliminate that gap or at least get it down to one or two scale inches which is the, is there if i flip it over and look at that i almost forgot the hood comes off somewhere under there i uh, must have done a pretty good job because even i can't see where i shortened the frame actually i think it was right about there i think that's about where i shortened it and i actually staggered it so i cut it here and then i cut it here one of the few quibbles I have with this kit is, is it would have been nice if the cab had have had some sort of a flip function to it. Of course, you could engineer that in, and the next time I build a Louisville, I might do that. But inevitably, you'll pick it up to show it to somebody, and then you'll forget that this comes off, and it'll fall on the floor. And brake, which 
which then means you cry. The engine I painted blue, because that's what the instructions said I should do. And this was probably about 10 years ago. And back then, I thought that Ford actually made their own uh, V8 diesel engines. No, they didn't. Uh, this is actually a Caterpillar engine, which you might think it should be painted yellow. But the first, uh, and I just read this on the internet, you know, so it could be totally wrong. But the first five to ten years of production, Caterpillar did paint the engines blue for use in the Ford trucks. So this definitely is not a Detroit diesel. And it doesn't appear to be a gasser. And the gas engines were really not common in these trucks anyway. So my assumption would be it would be the Caterpillar engine. And I think there was two or three different displacements for that engine. At any rate, very, very nice uh, engine model in this. And the firewall... Zoom there. The firewall, I actually used this as a pattern when I did my uh, Ford LTL 9000 wrecker. The Italeri firewall was a piece of crap. It had no detail on it whatsoever. This firewall has a fair amount of detail. So I basically copied the details that you see on here for that project. As I showed during the Ford Woody video, this does have a hinged side door which we can see there and I'm going to see if I can actually send the camera inside the truck so you can see what the inside of that looks like. Let's see how this turns out. There we go. You can see that's the way the inside looks with all the wood graining. Even the floor has wood graining on it. Now this isn't a very common uh, interior truck construction anymore. Usually the upper sides are all plywood or, or fiberglass for that matter. But I have seen older trucks like this where the top is uh, just has some slats on it. This truck really represents an early to mid 70s truck anyway. In this close up here you can see the the little bit of a, of a dip right there, just the little divot that the hood, you can see there's two little bulges right there, or not bulges, but two little knobs right there, they fit into those, which explains why the hood is just barely sitting on there. One thing I will definitely do next time I build a Louisville, and I certainly hope to build more, is the the hood restraining straps on a Louisville. They're actually kind of a big bulky, I don't know if they're aluminum, it's a certainly an aluminum color catch that hooks on there. And I didn't even, they give you kind of a, of a shadow where it should be, but I felt if I painted that on it wouldn't look very good. But next time I'm probably actually going to model that. Fortunately, this molding of the hood, the Ford logos were distinct enough that I was able to dry brush those. Two deviations. One was intentional, one was not. One was a, a total screw up. Uh, the first deviation, of course, is the box art and the decals indicate a truck that's basically white with red cab top and hood top and just the logos being red. Some Coke trucks were painted that way. Um, and certainly Diet Coke trucks are painted that way. But really, when I think Coke truck, I think of the all red schemes or mostly red schemes. So that's why I went with this. I mean, the very day I made the decision, I mean, I certainly saw one or two Coke trucks that were all red. So that's what I decided to go with. The other thing that is, is a screw up on my point is, of course, the wheels that AMT gives you were fully chromed. Well, I quickly oven cleaned those and, and took the chrome plating off and painted them red because red wheels on a red truck. Well, even on the red trucks, the wheels should be white. So that was a screw up on my part. And I didn't really, didn't really catch it till I was pretty much completely done.
So if you ever have the opportunity to build one of AMT's Ford Louisville's, whether it's the box truck in whichever livery they happen to offer it, whether it's the uh, racer support truck or the uh, the snowplow kit, which I also have, but it's kind of in pieces right now. doesn't matter which one you have a chance to, to build. I would definitely go for it. And as I mentioned in my stash video, you know what? I could have a stack of AMT Ford Louisville kits of various different types. There's so many different vehicles you could do with this. And the the overall basic kit is pretty good, definitely competent. Just the small quibbles I would have. Uh, the fact of the matter is the Ford Louisville from the time it was introduced in the early 70s, right up until, you know, uh, they stopped producing it in the mid 90s, although by the mid 90s it had rectangular headlights and some other styling on the nose was used for so many different things. Over-the-road tractors, pickup and delivery, uh, vocational trucks, things like that, that. There's so much you can do with it. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this project from the past, looking at the uh, Ford Coke truck that I built. Oh, I had to say about 10 years ago. And until next time, just keep on modeling. Thanks for watching.